And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to Eller Media Stadium. Wyatt Tomchek on the call. Thank you for joining us on the YouTube channel provided by UNLV Athletics. UNLV versus Montana on tap here today, Thursday night at Eller Media Stadium, part of the Marucci Desert class, uh, Classic Kickoff. Montana 4-1 and one on the year, while UNLV sitting at 2-3. and three. The Rebels got off to a little bit of a slow start in the first weekend of the series. Lost a couple close games to Oregon State and to CSUN. UNLV will try to get back on their winning ways today. UNLV defensively, they will have Lord Barker at third, Samantha Diaz at short, Justine Federi at second, Mia Trejo at first. Vollmer is behind the plate. Schmidt is over in left. Tixon is in center, and Cermak is in right. The starting pitcher for UNLV today is the sophomore ace, Jenny Bressler. 1.62 ERA, 1-2 and two is her record. This is the fourth game that she has started this year. One complete game, 17 and a third innings pitch. She's given up 12 hits, six runs, four earns, two walks, and 17 strikeouts. Opponents are only hitting 200 against the sophomore in her three starts, but unfortunately for Jenny, she is one in two, has gotten kind of the short end of the stick on some of the results so far in the first start of the year. Defensively, a couple errors hurt UNLV, and then against Oregon State, offense was only able to get one run for her. It's Montana team, four and one on the year. Their first season was in 2015, a part of the Big Sky, made the Mount, or the Mount West, Big Sky, or the NCAA tournament back in 2017. They were the 2017 Big Sky Conference champion, so they have been able to find the, the, the success quick in their brief Division I history. As up to bat for the first time today, Kylie Becker. And the first pitch here on this Thursday night is popped up behind the plate. Vollmer with a diving attempt, but just out of her outstretched glove, and that will be a strike. 0-1 oh is the count. Good effort by Vollmer, who gets dirty right at the beginning of this game. The sophomore Becker batting 176, three hits and 17 plate appearances, one home run, and three RBIs on this young season so far in the 2020. That pitch is a swing and a miss. Strike two is the count for this Montana team. Coming here to Las Vegas for the Marucci Desert Classic. They are 4-1 and one off to a really, really good start. Next pitch on the outside trying to get Becker to chase, but Bressler cannot get her. 1-2 and two is the count. There's a swing and a miss, and Jenny Bressler gets the first strikeout of the ball game off the first batter, the 18th strikeout of the year for the sophomore from Canton, Michigan. Kendall Curtis will be up to bat. The freshman has not gotten a hit so far this year, 0 for 14. She has started every game so far for Montana with an RBI. She has scored three runs. And the first pitch by Bressler is on the inside for a strike 0 and 1. Mentioned for this Montana team, they lead UNLV in the series history. It was back in 2017. It was a three-game series. They won it 2-1. to one. Not a three-game series, but they played them three times all on neutral sites. As the pitch is on the outside, one and one is the count. Both teams split a pair of games in Hawaii that year, and then Montana was able to win 6-2 to two in St. George, Utah for another tournament as the 1-1. One one is fouled back. One and two is the count. On deck is Cammy Sellers, the first baseman junior, batting 400. UNLV have Lauren Tixon, Maddie Schmidt, and Mia Trejo up bat, due up in the bottom half of this first inning. UNLV trying to get back to 500 play. They won their last game against Southern Utah University 6-2. to two. There's another swing and a miss strike three. Jenny Bressler has two strikeouts to start the ball game off. Two swings and misses, two outs here in the top of the first, and that will bring up Cammy Sellers, the junior, as we mentioned, batting 400 on the year, six hits and 15 plate appearances, one home run and four RBIs. This is a Montana team that has hit 11 home runs in their first five games. They've got some power as a check swing. Did she go around? The third base umpire says no. 1-0 is the count. UNLV in their all-black uniforms today. Road Browns for the Grizzlies, as that one is in there for a strike. One and one is a count. I mentioned five home runs. I mean, five. Eleven home runs for this Montana team. All came last weekend in their tournament as the 
Next pitch is taken high. Two and one is the count. The schedule for Montana, they beat Central Arkansas to start the year off three to two. Beat La Tech four to three in ten innings. Beat Jackson State nine to one. Alabama AM twelve to three. And then lost to number eighteenth ranked Texas Tech two to one in ten innings. So this is a very talented Montana team. They're beating the opponents that they need to beat, and they took the eighteenth ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders to extra innings, losing two to one. Three and one is the count. Wrestler's got the first two strikeouts in danger of walking her first batter, but that one is going to be fouled back into the net. Count goes full three and two with two outs. Utah Valley and Weber State are the other teams here that Montana will play at the Marucci Desert Classic. Wrestler gets her sign, the payoff pitch. Is right down the middle, strike three. Jenny Bressler strikes out the side to start the top half of the first inning. UNLV will get their bats going for the first time in the ballgame here in the bottom of the first. 0-0 zero, zero is the score here from Eller Media Stadium. Back here live at Media Stadium. Wine Tom check on the call here on the YouTube channel provided by UNLV Athletics. UNLV will be up to bat for the first time in this ball game. Jenny Bressler struck out the side. And so the bats will start off for UNLV. Lauren Tixon, the senior, had a great game against Southern Utah. Multi-hit game for her. Tixon, 3-12 on the year. Five hits and 16 plate appearances. One triple, two RBIs, and she's been 4-4 four for four on stolen base opportunities this year. Tixon was a... Tran uh, Juco transfer last year, and she's just been a fantastic player so far in her one-plus years here at UNLV. We mentioned for this Montana team, 4-1 and one is their record. This is the best five-game start in program history. Tristan Achenbach will be in the circle, and her first pitch to Tixon is on the outside for a ball 1-0. and oh. Achenbach on the year has been fantastic, point. 2-8 ERA, 3-1 is a record. This is the third game that she has started. 25 innings pitched. She's given up 14 hits. There's that one hits on the outside for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Five runs, only one of them have been earned. Four walks, 25 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 167 against the junior, who hails from Great Falls, Montana. That one will reach the inside for a strike. 2-1 and one is the count. UNLV was projected to finish tied for third in the Mount West Pole. San Jose State and San Diego State were above them. They were tied for third with Colorado State. A very talented UNLV team that did not get off to the start that they wanted to last weekend as that one hits the outside corner for a strike two and two. Hoping for a better result this weekend as they will be facing Montana twice, Weber State twice, and Utah Valley twice. And then they go to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they face some very talented opponents. As Tixon swings and misses at that one, it was a foul tip into the glove of the catcher, and that is going to be out number one for Tixon. That is her third time third time she has struck out this year. And they'll bring up the freshman left fielder, Manny Schmidt. That's 364. Oh, four hits and 11 plate appearances. She is three for three on stolen base opportunities, so the top two in the lineup for UNLV are the speedsters. As defense is in yet again. First pitch hits on the outside corner for a strike 0-1. On deck for the Rebels is Mia Trejo. So after you got the two speedsters, you got the power in the lineup with Trejo and Federi. Kind of like what UNLV had last year with Tixon and Reina Bondi. 
Now Maddie Schmidt, a freshman, is into the lineup, taking over the role as the number two hitter as the next pitch is going to be taken high for a ball. One and one is the count. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. We've had four batters come up to the plate. None of them have made contact in the field. They've struck out. Four strikeouts. Three for Bressler, one for Achenbach, and that will be sent foul near Mia Trejo's head standing on, there on, on the on-deck circle. Count goes to one and two. UNLV led by head coach Christy Fox in her third year. 71 and 37 is her record. 205 and 174 in her seven years as a head coach. Overall, as that one is going to be taken high, 2-2 two and two is the count. This was a UNLV team last year. Just continues to improve in the first couple years under head coach Fox. The 2-2 two -two is going to be fouled back into the net. UNLV last year finished 36-14, and 14-9 14 and in conference play, third overall in the Mountain West. They were just, just left out of the NCAA tournament. UNLV, they got a lot of returning players, 14 letter winners returning. Five of them were lost. Six starters returning on the positions. There's another swing and a miss. Five batters have come up to bat. None of them have made contact. Five strikeouts. And Mia Trail will be up to bat. Trejo, the junior, batting 273 on the year, 3 for 11. One home run and three RBIs. Trejo has one of the three home runs for UNLV. Righty versus righty. The first pitch is on the outside for a ball 1-0. Oh. Mia's gotten on base quite a bit, 529, as she's walked five times in, her first, in the first five games. Mentioned for UNLV, six position starters returning. Three of them were lost. Three pitchers returning. That's really the big thing. UNLV has a lot of experience in the circle this year. Off-speed pitch is taken for a strike. One and one is the count. Justine Federi will be on deck for the Rebels. UNLV also welcomes five newcomers. You saw Maddie Schmidt. Caitlin Covington, also another freshman in the lineup for head coach Christy Fox. The 1-1. One Trejo gets underneath that one, slaps it back into the net. One and two is the count. Now, last weekend, really, for UNLV, the pitching was what kept them in the ball games. Overall, they had a 1.70 ERA as the 1 2 pitch is down low, 2 and 2 is the count. The bats didn't really quite come alive. Obviously, in the two games against Oregon State, they were no hit in the first one, lost 1 to nothing, then lost to the second game to Oregon State, 3 to 1. Did explode against CSUN on February 8th, 10 to 1 win as that one hits the inside almost a strike 3 call. Trejo with a good eye, and the count goes full. Three and two is the count. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. Five strikeouts so far combined by both teams. Bressler and Achenbach have given their opponents some fits right now here in the first inning. The payoff pitch, and Trejo slaps that one back into the net foul. Count goes full yet again. Still full. UNLV overall hitting 200 uh, to start the year off. Try to improve that batting average. As the payoff pitch is on the outside, ball four. So Mia Trejo will get on base for the sixth time this year by way of a free pass. And that will bring up the cleanup hitter for UNLV, Justine Federi, the second baseman, senior, batting 286. Four hits and 14 plate appearances, two doubles, one home run, and five RBIs. I said 200 batting average. Actually, it was 240 overall for UNLV in the first five games, which was ranked third overall in the conference, but their ERA, 1.70, was second in the conference in the opening weekend. UNLV, as Justine Federi will take that one on the inside for a ball 1-0. I mentioned the first game for Bressler that she pitched against CSUN. The defense wasn't crisp. They gave up four errors on the opening day. Three in the first game. They did not... UNLV defensively did not commit an error over the last three games, so they were able to shore that up as Justine Federi gets underneath this one into shallow right field. Coming over is the second baseman, Curtis, and that will end the inning. UNLV gets a runner on by way of a walk, but that 
even though we can't get anything across the board. We go to the top of the second here at Ella Media Stadium. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. Top of the second here at Eller Media Stadium, UNLV and Montana. Scoreless first, which we saw th five combined strikeouts. Jenny Bressler struck out the side. Achenbach struck out the first two, walked me a trail, and then got Justine Federi to pop up to the second baseman, Curtis. And the first pitch is a little dribbler to third. One pitch to Barker, throw to first in time. One pitch, one out. And that's quick work for Jenny Bressler. And she is able to get the designated hitter, Morgan Johnson, out. The senior who was hitting 250 before that. Megan McGrath will be up to bat the sophomore shortstop, batting 389 on the year. Seven hits and 18 plate appearances, three home runs and seven RBIs. Those three home runs and seven RBIs are the most on this Montana starting lineup. Bressler is set, and the first pitch to McGrath hits on the inside corner for a strike. 0-1 is the count. McGrath standing at six foot from Salem, Oregon. The 0 1. That one is fouled back. 0 2 is the count. Zero, 0 is the score here in the top of the second. Jenny Bressler looking for her fourth strikeout as the 0 2 pitch is taken low for a ball 1 and 2. Brooklyn Weisgram is on deck for the Grizzlies. We mentioned for UNLV, the big thing for them was returning three talented pitchers in Brianna Burke, Jenny Bressler, and Charlie Masterson. As there's another swing and a miss, strike three. Jenny Bressler has four strikeouts so far here in the top of the second, two outs. Brooklyn Weisgram will be up to bat. The center fielder, sophomore batting 438 on the year, seven hits and 16 plate appearances, two home runs and three RBIs. We'll take the first pitch high for a ball, 1-0. and oh. We mentioned for UNLV returning those, those key pieces in the circle. The Rebels had a 2.39 ERA, which was the program's best since 2005, uh, 2005. As there's a little dribbler right back to Bressler, but she fumbles the ball, and it's going to be an air. No, the flip to first, not in time. Justine Federi was able to help out her starting pitcher as Bressler went off of her glove, but Weisgram was able to beat it out, and that is going to be, I don't know, maybe it could be an error. It is going to be an error, and it's going to be on Jenny Bressler. That is the first base runner for the Grizzlies. As McAllister will be up to bat for Montana, and she sends this one, a little blooper right to Bressler, one pitch. And the third out, Jenny's able to recover and get the out after giving up the error on the previous batter. The Grizzlies get one bat, one runner on, but nothing across the board. We go to the bottom of the second here at Eller Media Stadium. 0-0 zero, zero is the score.
Bottom of the second here at Eller Media Stadium, UNLV and Montana. Caitlin Covington will be up to bat for the Rebels. Covington, the designated hitter. Had a good start to her freshman year last weekend. 357 hit, 357 average, five hits and 14 plate appearances, a double and an RBI. They'll be looking for their first hit. They were able to get a walk in the bottom of the first by Mia Trejo, and that one goes on the inside for a strike 0-1. This is a great pitching battle between Jenny Bressler and Tristan Achenbach. A great, great pitching so far, and I believe one or two runs is really going to be the difference maker. If you score two runs, you might win this ball game. And the next pitch is going to be taken high for a ball. One and one is the count. For Covington, when leading off an inning, she's batting 500 and against right handed pitchers, 385 average. That one is on the outside, just hit for a strike. One and two is the count. Nobody out. It'll be Covington, Diaz, and Cermak for the Rebels. The one, two, and just fouled back by the freshman. By way of Las Vegas, Nevada, went to Shadow Ridge High School. I mentioned one of the five newcomers on this UNLV roster here in the year 2020. Makes me feel old saying 2020. A one-two pitch, and that one is a drive to center field. It is well hit going back, and the center fielder is able to clamp it down. Wisegram, Covington got some good, got some good contact on it, sent it well, but not hard enough, and that is going to be allowed out number one. I'll bring up the shortstop, Samantha Diaz, the junior batting 231 on the year, three hits and 13 plate appearances, one home run and three RBIs. Her home run with Mia Trejo and Justine Federi, those are the three players that have homered for UNLV, kind of the usual suspects from last year's team as Diaz gets underneath this one. It's going foul down the left field line. Will it stay in play? Diving attempt, but it is foul. And it looked like the umpire kind of held up an outside, but didn't say anything that was foul. So the count is 0-1. Montana out of the big sky. An all-time record in Division I, 134 and 147 as Diaz swings and misses that one. 0-2 is the count. Mentioned they made one NCAA tournament appearance back in 2017. They were swept out 0-2. Last year they finished 25-31 and 31 as that one's taken low. 1-2 and two is the count. But they did finish 10-8 and eight in the big sky third overall. And in the Big Sky Tournament, they were 1-2. and two. That's one thing I wish the Mountain West would kind of bring back is the uh, tournament championship. As that one is going to be taken low for a ball, 2-2. Two and two. And last year, there were about four legit teams in the Mountain West that had a, had a strong case uh, to make it into the NCAA Tournament. Two did, and two were denied that opportunity. One of those was UNLV. Is that one's going to be sent into right field for a base hit? Samantha Diaz goes oppo and gets the first hit of the ball game for either team. A single to right field, and that will bring up Stacia Cermak. Cermak, who hit the ball extremely well last year in limited time, usually was a great pitch hitter for head coach Christy Fox last year. UNLV was fantastic in that department. So far for Cermak, she is in, in, in an 0 for 12 slump. We'll try to get a hit here, try to put some pressure on Achenbach. That was just the 15th hit Achenbach has given up in 26 innings of work. The first pitch is on the outside for a ball 1-0. Diaz on first, hasn't attempted a stolen base this year. I mentioned in the Mount West, I mean, there's some really, really good teams from – about first to six, there are some legit uh, contenders in the conference this year as the 1-0 pitch. Cermak swings and misses at that one, 1-1. One one. I mean, you look at San Jose State got two first-place votes. San Diego State, they got three first-place votes. UNLV got one first-place votes. Colorado State had one. Fresno State had one. And Boise State, that was six out of the nine teams got first-place votes. And Cermak chased that one up high, a swing and a miss. One and two is the count. 
I mean, from first to six, San Jose State had 53 points. Boise State in six had 41 points. So it's it's really even. UNR, Utah State, New Mexico are kind of the bottom half of the the league in the Mountain West. And Cermak gets underneath that one. Still one and two. Overall, UNLV is seventh in the Mountain West with a two and three record, tied with New Mexico. Boise State, Colorado State started four and one. San Diego State was four and two. Fresno State was three and two. Spartans of San Jose State were two and two. New Mexico, as we mentioned, two and three. Utah State, one and four. And UNR, 0 oh and five. Cermak just is able to foul that one back. Count one and two. Lauren Barker is on deck for the Rebels, a sophomore batting 200, and then Julia Vollmer is in the hole. Samantha Diaz over at first, a single to right field. One out in the inning, the one-two pitch. Taken high, two and two. You know, they'll be playing Weber State and Montana. Uh, Utah Valley in this tournament here this weekend at LA Media Stadium. Next pitch is outside 3-2, and two, so Cermak has been able to fight back here, has a chance to at least get a walk and put runners in a scoring position. Rebels start off the last weekend with the Rebel kickoff. Now we're at the Marucci Desert Classic. The payoff pitch it is a swing and a miss. Cermak went chasing after that one and is now... Three strikeouts for Achenbach. Two outs in the inning for Lauren Barker, the sophomore batting 200. Two hits and 10 plate appearances. On base percentage sitting at 333. For UNLV against Weber State, the Rebels lead that all time series 5 to 1. First pitch is outside for a ball, 1 and 0. And UNLV has dominated the series against Utah Valley, leading that series 11-1. to one. 1-0 one is the count. Runner on first, two outs. The pitch. Inside, 2-0. and Mentioned Julia Vollmer on deck. Lauren Tixon is in the hole. Montana got one base runner in that top of the second, but was... Off of an error by Jenny Bressler, went off of her glove trying to come back a right to her. But she does have four strikeouts so far. The 2 0 pitch hits the inside corner for a strike two and one. For Barker this year, with runners on base, 400 average, and with two outs, 250 hitter. The 2 1. Gets underneath that one. Good contact, but sliced it foul down the right field line. Count goes to two and two. UNLV has struck out three times so far. Montana, four. And we're only in the second inning. So already seven combined strikeouts. The 2 2 pitch is going to be sliced foul in front of the dugout of Montana. Still two and two, two outs, runner on first here in the bottom of the second. This is a Montana team that has returned a lot of experience in the out uh, defensively in the field. They return eight position starters. They return two primary pitchers as this one is going to be fouled back in front of us. Still two and two, lost two. Overall, they're, re they're returning uh, 12 letter winners. Lo they lost three and have four newcomers. They're in the big sky along with Sacramento State, Weber State, Idaho State, Northern Colorado, Portland State, and Southern Utah University. UNLV faced that SUU team on Sunday and were victorious 6-2. to two. That one misses on the outside. Count goes full 3-2. and two. So back-to-back -back hitters in this UNLV lineup have taken Achenbach full here, making it work a lot in the bottom of the second with Diaz still at first. The payoff pitch is going to be sent into left field for a base hit. Diaz will hold up at second. UNLV gets its second hit of the inning. A single to right and a single to left. Good job there by Lauren Barker to get hit number three on the year. 
And I'll bring up Julia Vollmer. Vollmer, the sophomore, 0 for 4 so far this year. She has started three of the, now four of the uh, six games for UNLV. The first pitch to Vollmer is a swing and a miss. Count goes to 0-1. Lauren Tixon is on deck for the Rebels. Schmidt is in the hole. And they'll be trying to get a run against this Montana team, which overall team ERA is 1.11. There's a swing and a miss there, and Vollmer is in trouble down 0-2. Two. two outs, runners on second and first. Achenbach is set, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Vollmer was hacking on all three pitches and could not come up with any contact with runners in scoring position. UNLV, they get two singles in the inning, but nothing across the board. We go to the top of the third. 0-0 is the score here at LA Media Stadium. Back here live at LA Media Stadium, top of the third here between UNLV and Montana. Why Tom check on the call? Thank you for tuning in. Good pitchers duel so far. Only two hits, both by UNLV. Jenny Bressler has been fantastic in this ball game. And the first pitch is going to be taken high for a ball one and zero. Bressler so far has struck out four of the Grizzlies batters. Two other outs were off of one pitch ground outs or a ground out to third and a pop up to the pitcher. Swing and a miss here, one and one is the count. To Julie Phelps, the freshman right fielder batting 167, two hits and 12 plate appearances. And right now for the Grizzlies, they haven't really gotten it, a lot of good contact on Bressler as that one is gonna be taken for a strike one and two. UNLV will have the top half, top part of their order due up in the bottom of the third, Tixon, Schmidt and Trejo. Bressler gets her sign, the one two pitch. High, two and two. UNLV two and three, trying to get back to 500 here. The two two pitch is going to be sent down the third baseline, foul. Jenny Bressler last year really took UNLV uh, by storm. She was fantastic in the circle. One of the best pitchers in the Mountain West, one of the best freshmen in the Mountain West, could have won both categories as that one is going to be slapped foul down the left field line. Replaced the big void with Janine Petmecki graduating going into the 2019 season, and, and she took the reins as the ace for this UNLV team. Brianna Burke is also been improving all four years. Brianna had a really good year last year, and Charlie Masterson is a solid player in the circle as well. Good relief pitcher, or if you know in these tournament games, add her out as a, as a starting pitcher. Count is full three and two. A lot of options for head coach Christy Fox in the circle this year. We saw Aaron's get her debut against Southern Utah. The payoff pitch is on the inside for a ball, and that is the first walk of the ball game for Bressler. Almost had strike three, just missed on the inside. 
That's our third walk Bressler has given up this year. As Phelps will be on base, has not attempted a stolen base this year as Anne-Marie Petrino is up to bat, a senior outfielder from Pullman, Washington. Lays down or tries to lay down the bunt. The pitch is high. 1-0 is the count. Petrino is up to bat. Becker is on deck. Top half, a top part of the inning, the inning. Lineup for the Grizzlies. All struck out. Becker, Curtis, and Sellers. First four out of five players struck out. This one's popped up in the air. Oh, Lauren Barker had her glove out, reaching out, trying to get the ball. It looked like it hit her wrist, and she might have overran it, and that would have been a golden out for UNLV. Count goes to one and one as Petrino still trying to lay down that bunt with the leadoff batter on base with Phelps at first. UNLV already has one error in the ball game. 1-1. Another bunt laid down perfectly. Barker has it. Only play is to first with Justine Federi covering, and that will be the first down of the ball game. But they do move the runner to second, so hopefully that drop ball there by Barker is not going to hurt the Rebels. Kylie Becker will be up to will be back up. Mentioned she's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Wrestler breeze through that top of the first inning. For Becker. With runners on base this year, hitting at 129. She's only 188 against right-handed pitchers. Getting off to a slow start this year. First pitch is on the outside for a strike, 0-1. Montana trying to hopefully use the small ball here. His time is called as Barker had a tire shoe. The Grizzlies trying to use that small ball to get that run across. Like I mentioned, one or two runs really are, might be the all <laughs> these teams need with how great both starting pitchers are, as that one is in there right down the middle for a strike. 0-2 is the count. Curtis is on deck for the Grizzlies. Mentioned for UNLV, they'll have Tixon, Schmidt, and Trejo do up in the bottom of the third inning. Tixon and Schmidt struck out in their first two plate appearances. Mia Trejo was able to draw the walk. Pitch was outside. 1-2 is the count, one out. Phelps at second. UNLV and Montana, 0-0 here in the top of the third inning. There's a high drive in a left field, but it's going to be slicing foul. Is it going to stay in play? It is not. It is a foul ball. That was some great contact there by Becker. That was home run potential, but just pushed it foul down the left field line. And we breathe a big sigh of relief as the count remains one and two with one out here in the bottom of the top of the third. Both teams have struck out four times. Wrestler trying to get number five, and that one is taken low. Vollmer is able to stop it. Phelps stays at second. Two and two is the count. Second weekend here for UNLV softball. Tomorrow, UNLV baseball will start off their season against Central Michigan as the pitch is outside for a ball three and two. Four-game series to play a game on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, and another game on Sunday as the spring sports are starting to come back on this Las Vegas campus. The payoff pitch by Bressler is going to be slapped foul down the left field line, giving Chase uh, Schmidt, but can't get there in time. Count remains full, three and two. Bressler's walked one batter in the inning. That was Phelps. He was able to advance on the sacrifice bunt. Bressler set the pitch on the outside, misses. And he had Becker down one and two, but Becker is able to fight back, and that's two walks for Bressler as the pitching coach for UNLV, Emily Vincent, will be out to talk with her sophomore ace. Try to calm her down a little bit. It was a breeze for Bressler in the first two innings, but this one, a little bit more, of a little bit more trouble for Jenny, and she's given up two walks in the inning. She's only given up two walks in her previous three appearances this year. Still no hits for the Grizzlies of Montana. So 
after the talk, Vincent will head, Coach Vincent will head back to the dugout. As Kendall Curtis will be up to bat. Curtis, as we mentioned, 0 for 1, struck out in her first plate appearance. Montana this year has only scored one run in the third inning. Yeah, as that one is hammered foul, way out in front was Curtis on that one. 0 and 1 is the count. Runners on second and first. 0 0 is the score. Bressler's walked two batters in this inning. Can she get out? The jam she's put herself in. The pitch is taken for a strike. 0 and 2. Sellers is on deck for the Grizzlies. The 0 2. Is a swing and a miss. Jenny Bressler is able to. To fight back to get her fifth strikeout of the ballgame. Second time Curtis has gone down on strikes. Two outs in the inning for Cami Sellers. Sellers came in with a 400 average. Sellers struck out in her first plate appearances. The lefty against the righty Bressler. And she takes a big cut at that one and misses. 0-1 is the count. On the year for Sellers with two outs batting 500 with runners in scoring position. Same batting average. She hasn't gotten a hit against left-handed pitchers. All her hits have been against right-handed pitchers. 400 average as that one is taken high. One and one. UNLV, they've left three runners on base. Grizzlies so far one. Bressler would like to tie, UN, uh, tie Montana in that department with UNLV. Pitch taken low, two and one. Nine strikeouts combined by both pitchers so far in this ball game. Early on here in the top of the third. Five for Montana. They've struck out five times. UNLV, they've struck out four times. As there's a high drive in the left field. It's hanging up. Schmidt giving chase. Will go over, and it is foul. Couldn't see in that blind corner, corner over there. Kind of my view is blocked off by a tree in the light pole. So the count is two and two. Phelps at second, Becker at first. Two and two is the count, two outs. Here in the top of the third, the pitch by Jenny is just fouled back. Uh, Sellers was able to get just enough on that one to stay alive. Morgan Johnson is on deck for the Grizzlies if Sellers can keep this inning alive. The 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, way high, and it gets off the glove of Vollmer. The runners will advance. Phelps goes to third. Becker goes to second. The pitch was high. Sellers kind of turned away. Look, was getting close to hitting her, and Vollmer could not keep that ball in her glove, and it goes by to the backstop. Now the count is full, three and two, and an open base at first. The pitch, high, and Jenny has walked the bases loaded here. In the top of the third inning. Morgan Johnson will be up to bat. Johnson is 0 for 1 on the day. She grounded out to third in her first plate appearance. As the infield, talk it over with Jenny Bressler. Bressler has walked three batters in this inning. Sellers at first, Becker at second, Phelps at third. Johnson will be up to bat. And the first pitch is down the middle for a strike. 0-1 is the count. Morgan Johnson on the year with runners on base, 333 with two outs, 200 hitting. The 0-1 slap foul near the Montana Dugout, 0-2 is the count.
So far today, the Grizzlies are 0 for 3 with two outs against Bressler. The 0-2 pitch. High gets by Vollmer, but it goes off the net and went right back to her. She kind of fumbled it as she was trying to pick it up. The runner wasn't advancing, so UNLV kind of catches a break there. 1-2 and two is the count. Bases loaded, two outs. The pitch is uh, just missing on the outside corner. Lauren Barker was hopping over there at third. Thought it should have been strike three. We're back even two and two here with two outs. Still no hits for Montana. The 2-2 pitch is a swing and a miss, strike three. Jenny Bressler is able to escape the bases loaded jam after giving up three walks. Gets another strikeout, her sixth of the ball game. We go to the bottom of the third, still 0-0 here at Ella Media Stadium. Lauren Tixon will lead it off here in the bottom of the third inning. UNLV in Montana in a pitcher's duel so far. 0-0 was the score. Jenny Bressler walked three batters there in the top of the third, but was able to recover two big strikeouts. She has six overall. First pitch to Tixon is taken high for a ball 1-0. UNLV will try to maybe use some of that small ball as well. Tixon, 0 for 1 on the day, a strikeout in her first plate appearance. Achenbach has four strikeouts so far, has given up two hits. And as that one is high as well, 2 0 is the count. The two hits for UNLV were by Samantha Diaz and Lauren Barker. In the bottom of the second inning, Julia Vollmer, though, struck out with two outs with those runners on second and first. The 2 0. And Tixon. Swinging for the fences on that one. Foul tipped it into the catcher's glove. Two and one is the count. Akambach is set. The pitch outside. Three and one. Tixon, Schmidt, and Trejo do up here in the bottom of the third inning. Tixon and Schmidt struck out in their first plate appearance. Mia Trejo with the walk. One of the three base runners for UNLV. They've left three runners on base. The Grizzlies have left four. The 3-1 pitch. And Tixon will skid underneath that one foul back into the net. Count will go full three and two. As you mentioned, UNLV, they've struck out four times. The other two outs were by way of flyouts. The payoff pitch. And Tixon swings and misses at that one. Lauren Tixon has now struck out twice in this ballgame. She only had two in her first five games she played here in the 2020 season. Fifth strikeout for Achenbach. And that will bring up Maddie Schmidt. The first pitch to the lefty Schmidt. Is on the outside, just missing for a ball, 1-0. Oh. 
We have Trejo on deck for the Rebels, even though we would like to get Schmidt on base. She's got the wheels, and then you've got the power of Mia Trejo. And pi you know, you got to force opposing pitchers to pitch to Trejo. They are really timid with hers. That one is a little blooper that's going to get into left field for a base hit. So Schmidt answers the call as the ball kind of gets away from the second baseman, but the right fielder is able to back up the errant throw. Schmidt does not advance, but gets to first on the third base hit of the ballgame for UNLV, all singles, and that will give Mia Trejo an opportunity to hit for the for UNLV. The big power hitter in this lineup. Trejo walked in her first plate appearance, six walks already. That is double of what Schmidt has, the second leader in this lineup with three. And you got to force, you know, pitchers to to attack Mia Trejo and give her something to hit. We know what she can do with the bat as the first pitch to the first baseman is an off speed taken low for a ball 1-0. and oh. You got to pitch to her because Justine Federi has the power as well. Who is on deck for UNLV. Mentioned for Schmidt, Scott's a, is, has the speed. She's 3 out of 3 on stolen base opportunities. The 1-0. Inside 2 0. For Mia on the year with runners on base, 333 hitter. It's been great against left handed pitcher, 667 average, but against right handed pitcher, she has struggled just 125. The 2 0. That one off speed just hit the inside corner for a strike 2 and 1 is the count. I'll mention six walks for her. On base percentage right now at 556. The 2 1. That one hits on the inside 2 and 2. So give credit to Achenbach. Really not giving Trejo a lot to work with here on those inside pitches. The count is 2 and 2. Schmidt still over at first. We'll see if head coach Christy Fox wants to put her in motion here. Defense kind of in. And the pitch, Trejo is able to slap that one foul as Achenbach tried to go on the outside with it. Still 2-2, two and two, one out. Justine Federi on deck for the Rebels. You know, the three hits so far, no hits for the Grizzlies. They have gotten four base runners in this ballgame by way of three walks and an error. You know, they've had four base runners, three hits and a walk. The 2-2. Two -two. Trejo is able to hold the swing back and the count goes full three and two. So the count full one out. Let's see if head coach Christy Fox will have Schmidt going here at first. The payoff pitch. And it's going to be taken low ball four. So yet again, Mia Trejo is able to draw the walk her second of the ball game. Seven overall this year, and Justine Federi will have a golden opportunity here for UNLV. Leading RBI getter on this lineup so far with five in the early part of this 2020 season. Federi, she's 0 for 1 on the day, popped up to second in her first plate appearance. With runners in scoring position, 353. She was swinging for the fences on that one. Big swing and a miss. 0-1 is a count. Federi has two doubles and a home run on the year. The pitch taken high for a ball 1-0. So far today with runners on UNLV, they are 1-4 for four, uh, against Achenbach. The junior pitcher who has a 0.28 ERA. It's been fantastic this year. The 1 1. Federi gets a high drive in the left field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is foul. That's by a slim margin there. Justine Federi got all of that one, but just hooked it. Down the left field line, the count will stay. Will go to one and two. That would have been a big one there for UNLV. And now 
Fideri has to uh, shorten up here with the count one and two. Schmidt over at second, Trejo over at first. Covington is on deck for the Rebels. Hockenbach is set. The one-two pitch is taken low and inside. Two and two is the count. Good eye by Justine Fideri, who is one of two seniors on this UNLV lineup. Tixon is the other. Big moment here in the bottom of the third. The 2-2 pitch it is a swing and a miss. Strike three. So Justine Federio is a couple of feet away from a three-run home run. She's pushed it foul, and a couple pitches later, she swings and misses for the strikeout. UNLV is now struck out six times. Achenbach now has 31 on the year. She's been the ace for this Grizzlies team, and now Rebels with two outs will try to get it from their freshman designated hitter, Caitlin Covington. The first pitch. Covington gets underneath that one, and it's going to go foul and out of play behind UNLV's dugout. 0-1. Samantha Diaz is on deck for the Rebels. UNLV got a hit by Schmidt, a walk by Trejo. UNLV so far now with runners on, one for five. Uh, against Achenbach, and with two outs, one for three. They love a hit here. The 0-1. And that was going to be sent into the gap for a base hit. It's going to go to the wall. Schmidt will score. Mia Trejo is going to be waved home. The cutoff, the throw to home will not be in time, and it's a two-run double for UNLV. They take a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the third inning. Covington with their second double of the year, RBI number two and three. She sent that one into left center field. Great contact on an 0-1 pitch. And the Rebels had a big lead, two to nothing. And the way Jenny Bressler has been pitching so far, that one, those two runs might be the difference maker with Covington at second. Samantha Diaz will be up to bat. Diaz is one for one on the day. And Diaz swings and misses or swings and fouls the first pitch out of play into the streets. 0-1 is the count. First extra base hit of the ball game for UNLV, fourth overall. Covington keeps up her hot streak. Like the first five games, she came in with a 357 average. The 0-1, Diaz sends this one high up in the air. Will it go out of play? It will into the in between the stands and the dugout. 0-2 is the count. Oh and two, two outs. Covington at second after the big two-run double in the left center field. Achenbach trying to limit the damage here. The payoff pitch, high and outside, one and two. Cermak is on deck for the Rebels. UNLV finally is able to break through with that timely hitting. Now two for six with runners on today. As Diaz sends a high drive in the left field, kiss that ball goodbye. My goodness, it's going to go over the scoreboard for a two-run home run into probably the first row of the parking lots here at Eller Media Stadium. And Diaz gets UNLV on the board four to nothing now with a two-run home run, her second of the year. Now, if you parked it in the first row at the free line, hopefully the ball didn't dent your car. Samantha Diaz with an absolute bomb to left field, and UNLV has come up big here uh, against Achenbach here in the top bottom of the third inning. Four runs, all with two outs, a two-run double by Covington, and a two-run home run by Samantha Diaz. The first pitch to Stacia Cermak is going to be taken low for a ball 1-0. and And we'll say in my, in my fifth season calling UNLV softball, that might be one of the longest home runs I've seen here 
at Eller Media Stadium. The 1-0. And Cermak will take that one on the outside, 2-0. Stacia trying to get her first hit of the year. We'll try to probably try to take advantage of Achenbach struggles right now here in the bottom of the third inning. She only gave up one earned run in coming into this start, already four now in this inning. Is that one's on the outside three and oh now the junior for the Grizzlies, she is starting to get frustrated here. As UNLV has a very comfortable four nothing lead for Jenny Bressler. The three oh is taken outside for a ball, so it's a four pitch walk for Stacia Cermak. And I think this might be the right move here. The time is called as they'll try to settle down the junior ace for the Grizzlies. Or it might be the end of her night here. We'll see. Cermak over at first as Lauren Barker will be up to bat. Barker one for one on the day. She singled in her lone plate appearance. So Covington with the two-run double. Diaz with the two-run home run. UNLV now three for five with two outs. So helps with that walk with two outs. Let's see what Barker can do to really put the pressure on the Grizzlies. So after the conference call, Achenbach will be set and try to get out of this inning down by four. Now the Grizzlies, they haven't gotten a hit so far, but they do have – they been able to get some runners on base to create a little problem for Bressler. One due to an error and then that top half of this third inning. Got the bases loaded all off of walks, but right now they got to get some hits against uh, Jenny Bressler. None so far through the first three innings. Off-speed pitch is going to be taken for a strike 0-1 to the sophomore third baseman. One of the three sophomores on this lineup for head coach Christy Fox, Sir Mack over at first is one of them, and Julia Vollmer on deck is the other. The 0-1. Taken on the outside for a strike, 0-2. Sorry, one, yep, 0-2. So as you mentioned, both teams have struck out six times each. But UNLV with a big timely hitting, four runs off of five hits so far, as that one is a high drive in a right center field. It is well hit, it is going back, and that ball is gone. The second home run of the inning for UNLV as Lauren Barker gets her first home run of the year. And it's six to nothing. Rebels on top of the Grizzlies here in the bottom of the third inning. Barker goes opposite field to right center field. Not as far as Samantha Diaz's home run, but nonetheless, a home run is a home run. And UNLV, six runs. Now, off of six hits, as I'll try to update the score bu bug here real quick. There we go. UNLV leading now six to nothing as believe we're going to have a pitching change here for the Grizzlies as Achenbach will be taken out. Ashley Ward will come in, so we'll go to a quick break here. UNLV, six runs here in the bottom of the third. They are dominating the Grizzlies right now, up 6 to nothing.
So after the pitching change, Ashley Ward is in the circle for the Grizzlies as Achenbach was really tattooed in the bottom of the third, giving up six runs. And the first pitch to Julia Vollmer is taken for a strike. 0 and 1 is the count. Vollmer is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Achenbach had six strikeouts and came in with a 0.28 ERA. That's going to skyrocket as she got hit hard for six runs here in the inning. A two run double by Covington, a two run home run by Diaz, and a two run home run by Barker. All that coming with two outs in this inning. You know, V has the potential to bat around here as Vollmer is the ninth batter to come to the plate for the Rebels. And they're giving Jenny Bressler plenty, and I mean plenty, of room to work with. She's been great so far. No hitting. There's that one. I think Vollmer, nope. She's going to get in trouble with the umpire, and I saw it from up here. She stuck her elbow out and initiated the – Contact with the ball, trying to get a freebie as head coach Christy Fox will come over and talk to the home plate umpire. It's a quick discussion. She'll go back to her first base coaching box. Vollmer going to try to pull a fast one there, but the home plate umpire caught her. The count is one and two. Tixon is on deck for the Rebels. The one, two. Vollmer slaps that one back into the net. Still one and two. Julia in her sophomore season behind the plate. Split time last year with Kylie Harrison. She was a senior last year, graduated. Two and two is the count. Big responsibilities is that catcher position. It was manned by Brooks Stover for four great years. Stover was able to be a part of head coach Christy Fox's first year at UNLV as the 2 2 is. Looked like it might have been a check swing foul by Vollmer, and that's what the umpire is signaling. So we'll count remain even two and two. UNLV on top six to nothing over the Grizzlies of Montana. UNLV came in the ballgame with three home runs as a team. They've had two so far in this inning. As Vollmer will send that one back into the net. Still two and two. Two outs. Still two outs. I mean. Tixon and Federi struck out in this inning. Schmidt was able to get a single. Trejo walked, and then it just the floodgates opened when it was two outs, and Covington with a double. Diaz with the home run. Cermak with a walk, and Barker with the home run. As that one is going to go foul out of play right in front of us. Two and two is the count. Vollmer sends that one back foul yet again. Tixon is on deck. UNLV so far today with two outs. Four for six. Some of the stat lines on Ward this year. She's pitched an inning in two-thirds. She's given up three runs, three earned. 22.50 is her ERA. Three hits, two walks, and a strikeout. One wild pitch. And she's able to get the strikeout there. Her second of the year as Vollmer goes down for the second time in the inning. But for the... UNLV, it was a very productive inning as they get six runs across the board. A two-run double by Covington, a two-run home run by Diaz, and a two-run home run by Barker. And the Rebels are in control going to the top of the fourth. Six to nothing here at LR Media Stadium.
Top of the fourth here at Eller Media Stadium. Why Tom check on the call. It was a very exciting bottom of the third for UNLV. Six runs in the inning. Two home runs and a double. As Jenny Bresser had a long time to wait to get back into the circles. She sends the first pitch on the outside for a ball. One and O oh to Megan McGrath. And McGrath, a big swing and a miss there. 0-1 oh is the count. McGrath is 0 for 1 on the day, one strikeout. One of the six strikeouts for Bressler, who is breezed through here. Actually, I wouldn't say breeze, but because she had a little bit of trouble in the third inning, but was able to get the uh, get strikeouts, two big strikeouts. As the count is 1 and 2 as that pitch hit on the outside corner. Bressler was able to get Johnson swinging and missing with the bases loaded. 1 2 for Jenny. Is right back up the middle. Bressler is able to get that one. Fires it on over to first in time. One to three. And that's one out here in the top of the fourth. Bressler after getting the air in the second inning after a comebacker just she went to scoop the ball and the and it, the glove just pushed it away from her. She's been able to recover. Was able to catch a pop up and then got that comebacker right to her. One out in the inning as a drag bunt is gonna be popped up into the net. 1-0. 0-1, oh. Oh sorry. That was by Brooklyn Wisegram. Wisegram is 0-1 oh on the day. No hit so far for the Grizzlies of Montana. That one hits on the outside, 0-2. Oh the Rebels will have their... One, two, and three hitters do up in the bottom of the fourth, just like they had in the bottom of the third. Tixon, Schmidt, and Trejo. The 0-2 pitch. Off speed, taken high, one and two. Bressler got her lone win of the year against Southern Utah. She was breezing in that game. Could have gone the distance, but head coach Chrissy Fox, even though he was up six to nothing at the time, decided to give Haley Aarons an opportunity. As that one is on the outside corner, strike three. Jenny Bressler gets her seventh strikeout of the ball game. This one looking on the outside. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Jessica McAllister will be up to bat. McAllister, like most of her team, is 0 for 1 on the day. First pitch is going to be taken low for a ball, 1-0. UNLV six runs off of six hits, one air. Montana zeroes across the board in the runs, hits, and air department. A 1 0. Taken for a strike. 1 and 1 is the count. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. UNLV playing their second tournament of the year. Started off with a Rebel kickoff last weekend. The 1 1. Outside 2 and 1. Playing here in the 2020 Marucci Desert Classic. We'll be playing two games tomorrow and Saturday. Tomorrow against Weber State and this Montana team. 3 o'clock is the first time schedule pitch. And then 5.30 against Montana. As that one's going to be sent to short. Diaz has it. The throw over to first in time. And that will end the inning. A 1-2-3 inning for Jenny Bressler and UNLV. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Rebels try to increase their lead. They're on top 6 to nothing here from Ella Media Stadium.
Lauren Tixon will lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth here at Elamedia Stadium. Six to nothing is the score. UNLV on top of Montana. Rebels got six runs in that bottom of the third inning. Exploded. We started with the top of the lineup. Lauren Tixon, though, would like to get a hit. She is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Came in batting 312. Well, fake the bunt. Takes the pitch on the outside for a ball 1 0. The speedster Tixon, when she gets on base, four out of four on stolen base opportunities. She's got Tixon, Schmidt, and Trejo going up against Ashley Ward. Ward, who came in to get that last out in the third inning. Tixon will lay that one down. It's a beautiful one. The throw, there will be no throw to first as Lauren Tixon gets on base for the first time today. A single, bunt single to third as Becker came. Crashing in, you know, she got a good jump on it, but I mean, kind of double clutched it and didn't really have the confidence in throwing the speedster Tixon out. And I got to imagine head coach Christy Fox will have Tixon in motion. Tixon was four, is four for four on stolen base opportunities. And Schmidt thought about the bunt, but did not lay it down and has to take that one for a strike 0 and 1 between. Tixon and Schmidt, 7 out of 7 on stolen base opportunities. Defense is in expecting the bunt, the pitch. And Schmidt popped that one back foul, 0-2 is the count. Mia Trejo is on deck for the Rebels. And Justine Federi is in the hole. The 0-2 pitch outside, 1-2. and two. You know, He's not attempted a stolen base so far today. We'll see if they try to put Tixon in motion. The count is 1-2. and two. You know, be on top 6 to nothing. Seven hits for the Rebels in this ballgame. And Schmidt slaps that one foul down the left field line. Mention for Schmidt, she's 1-2, for two, scored the first run of the ballgame. A single in her first plate appearance. She sent a little blooper into left field. Has also struck out in her other plate appearance. A 1-2 by Ward. And that one's going to be sent into the gap. And this one's going to go all the way to the wall. Lauren Tixon's going to third. She's going to be waved home. Schmidt will go to third with an RBI triple as Lauren Tixon scores the seventh run of the ball game for UNLV. Maddie Schmidt. Gets her first career RBI as a Rebel. Congratulations, Schmidt, and also her first career triple. As she took that one in the opposite way into the gap, the eighth hit for UNLV. And the Rebels have a chance to go up by eight here. Mia Trejo will be up to bat with nobody out. Trejo would like to make some contact here, get something to hit. She has walked in her first two plate appearances, also scored a run. That one is going to be taken low for a ball 1-0. and oh. Great job by Schmidt, who's gone opposite field in both of her plate appearances. The defense has been in him, but she's been able to slap it over the heads of the outfield, or over, over the heads of the infield. The 1-0. Oh. That one's going to be taken low, 2-0. and oh. I'll tell you what, Mia Trejo has the fear of these opposing pitchers. They don't really give her a lot to hit. Count is 2-0, and oh. Trejo. She'll be looking at her third walk of the ball game in her third plate appearance. Schmidt at third. Nobody out. 7 nothing. UNLV on top. And Trejo gets a high drive of this one to center field. It's well hit, but it's going to be caught. Schmidt will tag the long throw to home. It's a good throw on the line, but it's well late with the speed of Schmidt. And Mia Trejo will get an RBI sacrifice fly to center field. Wisegram. Is able to clamp it down, put a good throw, but Schmidt is too much speed for her, and it's now eight to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bases will be empty for Justine Federi. Federi is 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout in her last plate appearance. Take the first pitch for a ball, 1-0. 8-0, oh. UNLV on top. We'll go to the top of the fifth here. The Rebels dominating Montana. As Ashley Ward has been hit for two runs in this inning.
UNLV used a bunt single by Tixon, the triple by Schmidt, and Mia Trejo with the sacrifice fly. 1-0, the count to Federi, and that one is going to be taken on the outside for a strike. 1-1 one one is the count. For Mia Trejo, that was RBI number four on the year for her. Still has not officially registered an at-bat in the scorebook. Sacrifice fly and two walks. The 1-1 one one is on the outside. 2-1 and one is the count as that got by the catcher for Montana McAllister. UNLV, eight hits in 17 plate appearances. They've gotten a double, a triple, and two home runs as yet again we'll have Conference call here for the Grizzlies as Ashley Ward getting talk, talking with the coaching staff. Montana came in four and one on the year. UNLV two and three. Covington is on deck for the Rebels. She got the scoring going with that RBI dub to run double in the bottom of the third inning that came with two outs. All six of those runs came with two outs. And Samantha Diaz with a ball that's still traveling here in Vegas. One of the longest home runs I have seen here at Eller Media Stadium. The count is two and one, one out. Base is empty. Federi slaps that one high in the air and it will go out of play. Count goes two, two and two. Eight nothing is the score, Montana. They're gonna have to score here in the top of the fifth. As the two-two pitch is taken low, three and two is the count. Eight runs for UNLV off of eight hits, one error. Rebels, as we mentioned, will be playing tomorrow. They'll be playing Montana. Five thirty is the schedule first pitch, and then UNLV will play Weber State at three o'clock. That'll be the first game, and then they'll wrap it up with Montana. As Fideri sends a high drive in the left field, it is. Going to be shallow enough. It went halfway down. It was a smile-high pop-up, and it's clamped down by the left fielder, Petrino, for out number two. So I'll bring up Caitlin Covington, the freshman. Continues her red-hot start to her UNLV career. A big two-run double with two outs in the bottom of the third inning. I got the scoring going. One for two overall with those two RBIs. Ward trying to get out of the inning, only giving up two runs. The first pitch on the outside for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Samantha Diaz is on deck for the Rebels. The 1-0, -oh, and that one's going to be sent to right center field. It is well hit going back, and it's going to go off the wall. Covington took the long turn at first and has to go back as though she hit the ball so hard it went right back off the wall to the right fielder Phelps and is a very, very long single for Covington who probably, you know, as a freshman, you don't want to gauge it too hard and get out. <laughs> you don't want to get in the ire of a coach trying to get that extra base hit, although it was hit well enough. That it should have been a double, but it sometimes the luck of the draw with the way the ball Bounces off the wall, and Covington back-to-back -back hits in her plate appearance. And I'll bring up Samantha Diaz. And Diaz hit that moonshot of a home run in the bottom of the third inning that went over the scoreboard in left field. Takes the first pitch down low, 1-0 is the count, two outs. But for Covington, still keeping up that hot streak, two for three today. As that one is taken low yet again, 2-0. Cermak is on deck for the Rebels. Montana, as mentioned, they got to get some scoring going. They'll go up against Jenny Bressler, who breezed in that fourth inning. The 2-0. Outside, 3-0. 8 nothing. Covington at first, the 3-0 pitch. Diaz slaps that one back foul, 3-1 is the count. 
UNLV today with two outs. They are a very impressive 5-4. Or sorry, looking at the wrong thing. That's with runners on. They're 5-9. With two outs, they are 5-8. for eight. Outside ball four. So Samantha Diaz gets on base by way of a walk. Diaz has reached base all three times now. She was 2-2 two for two with the single and that home run. And gets the walk. I'll bring up Stacia Cermak. Cermak is 0 for 1 on the day. Walked in her last plate appearance and scored a run off of the two-run home run by Lauren Barker. Covington at second. Diaz at first. The pitch. And that one is going to be taken low. Good stop by McAllister. One and knows the count. UNLV, as you mentioned, nine hits and 19 plate appearances. They've also been able to draw four walks. They've had a lot of base runners on today they've left three runners base runners on the 1-0 pitch and that one's going to be slapped back foul one and one and goes to say so far for UNLV when they've gotten the runners on they've gotten the them to home mentioned six in that third inning two run double two run home run and a two run home run as that one is going to be slapped down the left field line. It is well hit, and it's going to be caught, though, just in front of the warning track by Petrino as she was kind of getting a weird angle on it, but she's able to clamp it down, and that will end the inning. But UNLV, they get two runs across the board. We go to the top of the fifth, 8 nothing. UNLV on top of Montana here at LA Media Stadium. Last chance for Montana here in the top of the fifth. They've got to score a run to keep this game alive. UNLV is on top 8 to nothing. as Jenny Bressler back out for another inning of work. She has no hit the Grizzlies so far through four innings. Bressler set the first pitch. It is going to be sent to first. It's an easy play to Mia Trail. She'll just tag out Julie Phelps for out number one. As one pitch, one out, three unassisted. So Phelps is now 0 for 1 after she drew a walk in her first plate appearance. Petrino will be up to bat. She walked in her first plate appearance as well. Defense is in for the speedster. And she slaps that one behind the plate as the umpire nice reflexes, able to catch the ball off the bounce. 0 and 1 is the count. The 0 1 by Bressler, and that one's going to be taken high for a ball 1 and 1. UNLV on top, 8 to nothing. Start off as a slow game. I thought it was going to be a pitcher's duel between Tristan Achenbach and Jenny Bressler, but in the third inning, it just went downhill for the Grizzlies as UNLV scored three or six runs. And it really, the Grizzlies, that was their best chance to score as they had the bases loaded against Jenny Bressler with two outs. But Bressler was able to get one of her seven strikeouts to end the inning. One and two is the count after the foul ball down the left field line. The sophomore has set the pitch. High and inside, and it's called strike three. Another strikeout for Jenny Bressler. She gets another 
Montana player looking at that one. Two outs here, last chance for the Grizzlies. And it goes back to the top of their lineup, Kylie Becker, who is 0 for 1 with the walk. She struck out in her first plate appearance, walked in the second. And that pitch is going to be taken low for a ball 1 and 0. So for Jenny Bressler, eight strikeouts in the ballgame. She came in 17 overall in the season. So she's up to 25, the 1 0. And that one's going to be slapped foul down the left field line. Most likely for UNLV, we'll see Brianna Burke and Charlie Masterson starting tomorrow. As UNLV, we mentioned, they'll be playing six games this weekend. So the 1 1 is going to be taken high. 2 and 1. Might see some of those new faces like Haley Ahrens, who got some action against Southern Utah. Set the 2 1. That one hits on the outside for a strike, 2 and 2. Last chance here for Montana. Down to their final strike. They've got to score a run here to keep this game alive or be in danger of being run ruled. Only have one loss on the year. That was to Texas Tech. Pitch on the outside, 3 and 2. And they lost to a nationally ranked Texas Tech team, 2 to 1 in 10 innings. Count is full. The payoff pitch is going to be sent to second. Justine Federer with a beautiful backhand. The throw to first in time. As UNLV is able to run a rule, the Montana Grizzlies and Jenny Bressler will get the no-hitter through five innings. Jenny was fantastic in this ballgame as UNLV improves to 3-3 three and three on the year. The Grizzlies fall, fall to 4-2 and two on the year. Montana... Just could not get anything against the sophomore ace for UNLV as Jenny Bressler picks up her second win of the year and proves a 2-2 two two on the year. The sophomore overall, five innings, gave up no hits, no runs, no earned, three walks, and eight strikeouts. She faced 19 batters. Really, her defense didn't have to do much for, U, uh, for UNLV as Bressler got six ground outs and a fly out. And a couple of those, a fly out and the ground out was to her. For UNLV, though, the offense was really big in that third and fourth inning, led by Samantha Diaz, who was two for two with a two-run home run to left field. Caitlin Covington was two for three with two RBIs, a two-run double in that third inning. And Lauren Barker was two for two with a two-run home run in that third inning. Schmidt was two for three with an RBI triple. And Mia Trejo had the lone other RBI with a sacrifice fly. She also walked twice. UNLV... Eight runs off of nine hits and one error. The bats were alive for the Rebels as they improved to 3-3 three and three on the year and will be back in action tomorrow. First game against Weber State, 3 o'clock. We'll have the call here on the YouTube channel provided by UNLV Athletics, and then they'll play the same Montana team at 5.30. We thank you, everyone, for tuning in with us here tonight. UNLV in dominant fashion, run rule. The Grizzlies of Montana, 8 to nothing, and improved to 3-3 three and three on the year. I'm Wyatt Tomchek signing off. Wishing everyone a good night here from Eller Media Stadium.